Hey guys, I'd like to thank those of you who are still kind of staying with me on this. I can I kind of looked at uh, the numbers of people who watch this. And um, so the first day, the Monday video, I had about 32 of you watch it. There's 41 of you in the class. So 32 is pretty good if, if everybody just watched it once. I'm subtracting one for my, me pulling it up. Um, so 32, that was, that was really good numbers. The Tuesday video got about 16, 15 or 16. So, I mean, it cut it in half. The Wednesday video, there were seven of you that watched. So if my math continues, the trend goes the way it is, I'll have about four of you today and Friday, I'll be lucky if I get two. So not, not the best numbers. I'd like to see more of you watching this and paying attention. But that being said, um, hey, if there's four of you with me today, awesome. Uh, I hope that this will somehow help those four, all right? Um, you can only put the resources out there and hope people use them at this point, whether it's online or whether it's in class. So, uh, you know, thank you to those of you who are still paying attention and uh, you know, taking this serious and, and, and maybe hope, and hopefully this is helping you some, all right? So, um, you know, honestly, the videos aren't necessary for this. This is a very easy book, but I don't think it's right for me to just Hey, read this, answer these questions at the end. I feel like that's just, it's not who I am. So, so we're going to pick up with the second Tuesday. We started yesterday with where we got to the actual meat of the book, where we have the various Tuesdays. There's 13, 14, there's 14 Tuesdays. Um, and so we're going to cover a couple of them today. In fact, let me make sure. I think we go to the, we go through two, three, four, and five. Yeah, we'll get, we're going to get a good chunk today, actually. So we stop on the professor. All right, sorry, I had to look at my notes. So let's start with sec the second Tuesday, where he says, we talk about feeling sorry for yourself. In the situation where he finds himself in, we would expect him to feel sorry for himself. No one would begrudge him feeling sorry for himself at this point, all right? But, and we're going to keep these kind of short. I know yesterday went 30 minutes, and that may be part of why nobody watched it. Um, so... Mitch is asking him, like, do you ever feel sorry for yourself in this situation? I mean, you've done so much, you've given to so many people, and now you're slated for this horrible death. Now, he doesn't say you're slated for a horrible death, but let's just sum it up. And here's Maury's response. He says, I give myself a good cry as if I need it, uh, if I need it. But then I concentrate on all the good things in my life, on the people who are coming to see me, on the stories I'm going to hear, on you if it's Tuesday, because we're Tuesday people, right? Uh, you know, he basically says, look, yes. The key here is not to say, no, I don't allow myself any self-pity. You can't avoid, when you feel bad about something, allowing that to creep in. I had that. I had a moment like that yesterday. Uh, you know, um, I've worked really hard to build the career I've built, and there's little elements of things that feel like that's slipping away on me. And um, I sat there yesterday and allowed myself to get all inside of that and be like, you know, I've worked so hard, you know, and, and get to that I'm owed this, this, and this feeling that you never should really get to. But I let myself get into it. Uh, it was a really bad day yesterday, to be honest with you. Uh, struggled a lot. Um, uh, but, you know, honestly, reading this book again and prepping for this video helped me remember that it's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel like you're getting a raw deal on something. But then you let it go and have to make do with whatever the situation is. And that's the point he's saying. He's like, I look at all the good things in my life and I focus on that. Look. There are a ton of people in our country right now who have such bad situations they're looking at. You know, can't pay their rent, can't afford food, um, you know, don't know how they're going to get through the next month. And, you know, I'm still employed. I'm still working. Um, you know, my wife is still working. Uh, you know, we're, you know, my, my son apparently can't learn anything. He's struggling through school, but, you know, he's still in school um, as opposed to I have some friends whose children don't are, are technically still in school with the public schools, but they haven't gotten any work. They don't, I mean, those kids are gonna be behind. So there's so many blessings we have in life. And if you can focus on those and ignore the self-pitying moments, and if Maury can you know, say, hey, I'm gonna focus on the good things in life, even though I'm dying from a very uh, tragic disease, I can get over getting my feelings hurt about a job thing, okay? So um, he says that it's use how useful it would be to put a daily limit on self-pity, just for a few tearful moments, been on with the day. So, and the key here is that, you know, a lot of people read this book and say there's not, they're not offering new information, and in some ways he's not. But the point here is it's not to avoid feeling bad for yourself. The point is you need to. You need to let that happen. You need to go ahead and, and, and get in your feelings and feel bad for a few minutes. And then pack it up 
and say, I'm going to choose to move on now, now that I've allowed that emotion to happen. This is going to be something that Maury mentions again late in the book, the importance of allowing these negative emotions to have their moment so that you can go ahead and experience them and say, okay, now I choose to move past that. All right. So uh, this section really deals with that concept. Okay. I'm going to really kind of hit high points only today so that I can keep you guys from, you know, being stuck here for 30 minutes. Um, so the next time we come up, the next one, the third Tuesday, is going to be about talking about regrets. And again, this is one of those end of life moments or, or situations where you can really find yourself in a hole. All right. You start thinking about all the things you didn't do. Say, God, I wish I had done this. And what if, if only I had done this? Or what if I had done this different or met this person earlier or not at all met this person, you know, or made just different decisions? You know, you can easily fall into this regret hole. I mean, you can do it now. Uh, you can think about all sorts of different things that if you had only done differently, uh, it, you know, it doesn't have to be when you're coming towards the tail end of your life. Um, <clears throat> so as Mitch gets there, he, um, he point, there's, there's a hauntingly cool line in this, uh, and it really has nothing to do with our discussion, but I want to point this line out to you. He says, I suppose tapes like photographs and videos are a desperate attempt to steal something from death's suitcase. That right there is one of the things that when I read it for the first time made me realize this guy's a brilliant writer. He's not just a good writer. He's not just an excellent sports writer. This guy's a brilliant writer. And yes, one sentence can do that. You know, the idea that, you know, we take pictures of things and videos and all of these different recordings is a way of when someone dies, keeping them with us. Uh, and, you know, just the way he words it, it's a simple sentence. It doesn't have to be complex to be good. All right. So let's see what they say about regrets. Um, when they start talking and it gets down to, this is Maury speaking, he says, Mitch, the culture doesn't encourage you to think about such things until you're about to die. We're so wrapped up with egotistical things, career, family, having enough money, meeting the mortgage, getting a new car, fixing the radiator when it breaks. We're involved in trillions of little acts just to keep going. So we don't get into the habit of standing back and looking at our lives and saying, is this all? Is this all I want? Is something missing? We pause. You need someone to probe you in that direction. It won't just happen automatically. I knew what he was saying. We all need teachers in our lives, and mine was sitting right in front of me. So he's talking here about, um, you know, our culture doesn't encourage us to think about, you know, that that end point, about when I get to the end of my life, am I going to look back and say, I wish I had played more Xbox or I had watched more Netflix? We're not, we don't think about that because if we did, we wouldn't spend so much time on those things because the answer to both of those is no. All right. When those final days come, and hopefully you're going to be very old people, but you're going to look back and you're going to think about all. You're going to think about the relationships. You're going to think about you know wishing you had spent more time with this person, or you know that you'd been a better father or a better husband or better wife or better mom. There's all of those thoughts are going to come. All the stuff we seem to invest our time in <coughs> will not be the things that we think about. In all honesty, for most of us, our jobs won't even be. You know, it's going to be about those relationships, the things that you can, imp and, and, you know, involve yourself in now. A lot of us don't. All right. I like the point where he says we all need teachers in our lives. Uh, and it doesn't just mean school teachers. In fact, it doesn't mean school teachers. It means people that can be guides for us and show us, look, you know, and then people we respect. That's the problem. You know, you have these people in your lives. They're your parents. But a lot of you don't, you know, for some reason, don't think your parents know anything, which is completely false, by the way. You know, your parents are great sources of wisdom if you would just give them a chance and actually listen to what they're saying because they're right most of the time. I know you don't want to hear that, but uh, giving them a chance and listening to them and learning from them, you could save yourself so many heartaches and troubles. Uh, it'd be nice if we ever learned that. We could quit going through the same problems. All right. So Mitch kind of gets his idea for this book in this section. It shows right here at the end. You see this little rapid fire section here as they go down says uh, on the way back he's writing a list out of things he wants to talk about and this is what we're gonna we're in for he's got death fear aging greed marriage family society forgiveness a meaningful life these are all like big questions and he's gonna talk about them all right um we go to the, the i told you guys that this audio visual section that it was gonna pop up three times one at the beginning of maury's illness one kind of midway and then third one at the end so this is the second one where Ted Koppel comes back to kind of do a follow-up uh, with Maury. Um, and, and, and Ted's basically asking him, hey, how's it going? Do you get down? How are you feeling? That sort of thing. 
says, here's how my emotions go, Maury told Coppa. When I have people and friends here, I'm very up. The loving relationships maintain me. But there are days when I am depressed. Let, not, let me not deceive you. I see certain things going and I feel a sense of dread. What am I going to do with my hand, without my hands? What happens when I can't speak? Swallowing, I don't care so much about. So they feed me through a tube, so what? But my voice, my hands, they're such an essential part of me. I talk with my voice. I gesture with my hands. This is how I give to people. This is how will you give when you can no longer speak, Coppola asked. Maury shrugged. Maybe I'll just have everyone ask me yes or no questions. So... This is one of the great things about this person, about Maury. You know, first of all, he's very honest about who he is. He's like, you know, when I'm around people and my mind's busy, I'm happy. I, I, can, I can enjoy that. When they're gone and I think about what's going to happen to me, I do get sad. He's not acting like I'm super brave and nothing gets to me because he knows it does bother him. As ALS is progressive, it's, it, I, I believe it. I mean, I, I guess there's some instances where it might not, but it starts at your legs and moves up and you just slowly lose lose the ability to control the areas it's hit so you know eventually you can't walk anymore eventually you get to where you you need help going to the bathroom even and then as it moves up you know it kills you when it gets here because your lungs uh you suffocate um so maury knows this is coming and he's like you know eventually i'm going to lose the ability to use my hands i'm going to be too weak and when i can't talk I no longer have anything to offer people. He says, and that's the part that scares me the most. Because again, Maury is about helping others. He is never about himself. He, let me back up. He is about himself occasionally. Those days where he's feeling self-pity, and later we're going to see where he feels some other negative emotions, he allows them to happen. Because burying that stuff is not healthy. But he does uh, point out that at times it bothers him. Um so uh, towards the end of this section, it says, suddenly with all the cameras still humming, Maury adjusted his glasses. He stopped, bit his lip, and began to choke up. Tears fell down his nose. I lost my mother when I was a child, and it was quite a blow to me. I wish I had a group like yours where I would have been able to talk about my sorrows. I would have joined your group because his voice cracked, because I was so lonely. Maury, Koppel said, that was 70 years ago your mother died. The pain still goes on? You bet, Maury whispered. And then we get this chapter called The Professor. All right, and this is the section that um, I, th I think this is this where we stop. Let me check. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought we had a lot more than that. You, we stop on the professor, and this really stinks because I wanted to read more. I condensed so much because I thought we had to get all the way through like three more chapters, and, I, and we don't. So. 12 minutes, you know, but the thing with this section we're about to get into is we're about to find out about Maury's past because Maury has a tragic past, tragic past, the death of his mother, what happens to her, what, ha now there are some bright spots, but some of what happens after is kind of tough, and then when we're going to read later about what happened to his father, and oh my goodness, I mean, that's terrible too, this guy has every reason to grow up and be a horrible human being and to blame the world for his situation, and he doesn't do that, all right, he, uh, he, in fact, becomes a better person so that no one has to go through what he went through, or at least he can try to slow down the amount of grief in the world. So closing out, that's kind of what I want you to think about today. Our goal, our jobs here, um, all of you watching this are gifted people. You're gifted with talents. You're gifted with resources. You're gifted with people that care about you and love you. And we should be using those to limit the amount of pain in this world, so to help where we can. We're not going to defeat all of it. We could. I want you guys to understand that. We could. All right. You know, we, we talk about things like it even, it's even biblical that the poor will always be with you. God's not saying poverty is impossible to overcome because it's not. It's very simple to overcome. He just knows we're not going to do it. All right. You know, so if each of us that is a person with resources reaches out and helps, and I don't mean giving money to that, that could be part of it. But I mean actually reaching out and trying to help these people improve their lives. Just be there for them. Be there for someone to talk to. All right. Anytime you see someone, you guys, you have friends who are who you know are having bad days. I see it. I mean, a morning doesn't go by where I don't see someone upset or crying out in the hallway. All right. So we have these people. If we can reach out to them and make their lives just a little bit better each time, then um, if we all did that, if we all reach reach out to like one or two people. You know, the, it would be massive changes in our communities, in our country, and in our world. So it's not hard to reach out and just be say, I'm going to be a person who who alleviates pain, who doesn't cause pain. And that's kind of the goal. Um, so a couple things we want to think about. One we want to think about, and this kind of goes to something we've been doing, so I don't want to leave it just on this, but we do want to look at areas today 
where we see someone hurting. And I realize, well, I'm just at home. I don't see anybody. You see some people who are in pain a lot, and that's your family. All right? Um, even if your parents are still working, there's stress. Okay, my wife's still working, and she's working pretty hard. She's a nurse. But everyone at work is stressed because they're also concerned about this virus. So they take it out on each other. And my wife comes home, and she's upset. And, of course, the first thing she gets when she gets home is I'm having rough days because I'm not really cut out for being a middle school teacher. Trying to help my son with his work is just not going well. And like I said, I'm having my own job stresses. So, and then I've got health stresses, guys. You know, the four of you watching this, uh, we almost had to send me to the emergency room last night because of, uh, you know, issues with the stomach ulcer. And uh, I didn't go because I'm stubborn and stupid. And eventually it quit hurting. But uh, <laughs> all of those stresses pile up and it makes it tough, man. This is one of the toughest times I've ever lived through for me. And it's, and like I said, I'm, I'm in better shape than a lot of people. I'm probably in better shape than over half of the country right now. And still, it's uh, it's tough. So your parents definitely could use just you reaching out and being just finding some way to make their life a little better today. You you can't fix everything in one day, but you can help little things. All right. The other thing that's kind of more in line with our reading today is about the regrets. I want you to think about you know that that day. You know, hopefully decades down the road. But that day, and think back to say, what, what are the things I'm going to regret that I can fix right now? Okay, You're at an age right now where you do have, uh, um, I know you don't feel like you do. I, I know you don't. But I promise you, you do have a lot more free time than you think. Because you're going to be an adult and you're going to look back and realize how much time you did have. But So think about, you know, what are some things that you can invest in now that are going to be at that end point where you won't feel regretful? You'll be like, you know, yeah, I wish I had spent more time doing blank, but you know what? I had a good life, and I feel like I've made an impact, and when the time comes, I'll be ready. And that's what we all need to be. We need to be like Maury. Maury now, Maury's going to struggle towards the end because, you know, it's easy to say looking down the road, yes, I'm ready for that. And then when the moment gets there, it being a lot more difficult. And that's realistic, and that's human, and we need that. If, if this wasn't the case, this book wouldn't have the power it does. So let's think about this thing. Let's think about how we can limit the pain in, in our immediate world, okay? Not the world overall. That's too big to tackle. Let's look at our immediate world, and also let's look at what are some things we can invest in now that we'll be proud of when our day comes, all right? Because like I said, for uh, hopefully for you guys, it's going to be, you're going to be 80, 90, 100 years old before this happens, but for some of us, it's going to happen earlier. And, uh, you know, Time's a lot more limited than we think it is. You know, you think, oh, 70 years old, that's so far away. It's not, okay? Uh, it's really not when you start piecing it together, okay? Think about, you know, I turned 42 the week we went out for um, for the uh, for this virus thing. And I realized I've had 40, I think it's, my math may be wrong. I think, yeah, I've had 42, 42 birthdays, 42 birthdays. Um, and, you know, how many more are in there? And, you know, it's probably not another 42. You start thinking, you know, these days, these years just caught up. You know, I remember being turning you know, 18. I remember turning 20. I remember 25. I remember 30. And I remember 40 was really recently. And, you know, you just look back and realize those hours have slipped away. And, you know, if you live to be 70, 70 birthdays is not as much as you think it is. Those are 70 specific days, which is, you know, a fifth of a year that you get to enjoy that day and that by itself. And so we think about each year as being so long and they take so long, and they really don't. So we want to start planning now to not have those regrets at the end, okay? All right, guys, thank you again to those of you who are watching this. And no bad, if, if you tuned in for this one and you didn't watch yesterday, it's no big deal, okay? Um, I want to point out again that I'm kind of approaching my, my life and my job differently now. And one of them is, you know, it's not personal. You guys have a lot going on and you're busy. And some of you look at that and you say 30 minutes. I don't really want to do this today. And, that, and you know what? I get that. That's fine. Um, it's tough to get up in the morning sometimes and make these. I just want to go back to bed or I want to. Hey, I'm no different than you guys, to be honest with you. I want to get up and I want to you know, watch six episodes of whatever show I'm into today. Or I want to go spend two hours playing a video game. I, I get it. I do. Um, so hang in there. Those of you who are with me, thank you. Um, thank you. And those of you who watched all four videos, I really appreciate that. There's a couple of you who I know are doing it. I just have no doubt. I want you to know how much uh, it means to me that you're taking the time to do this when you really could uh, be doing other things. So thank you guys. Love all of you. Um, I hope you have a great Thursday or you had a great Thursday, depending on when you watch this. 
And uh, you're, I'll try to get to your tests here in the next couple of days, okay? Um, thank you guys so much for taking your time and being with me today.